Come to worship today. <laughs> Good to see you all here. Thank you for braving the rain and getting here. Some of you came in just a little damp, but I understand the rain's supposed to ease off and stop in a little bit. Also, we welcome those of you who are worshiping with us from home today. We have an awesome pantry pileup this month of August. It's very special. We have set a goal of 20,000 individual packets of instant oatmeal, and that goes to the Snack Pack Ministry. If you don't know, they... Uh, they would give food to children as they leave school on Friday, so they'll have uh, food for the weekend. So it's an awesome thing to do. Um, that's a lot of oatmeal, so we need your help to do that. It's all due to be into us by August 27th, and we'll have bins, or already have bins, out in the atrium with pantry pileup on them. So drop the oatmeal there. The Good News Club is a really wonderful thing. The Good News Club is a way for us to bring the stories of the Bible into schools. And um, a few years ago, Christ Church began sponsoring, paying for the cost of the Good News Club at Westview Elementary School. And then last year, we led the ministry, telling the stories, doing the lessons. It happens right after school on Thursday afternoon. And we need some folks to help with that this year. So think about it. And uh, if, you can, if you can do this, there's training for it on Saturday, August the 19th. And if you need more information or if you'd like to just sign up, you contact Bev Thompson, a member of our church. Her number is 240-2216, and her email address is bevbthompson at gmail.com. If you didn't get that or if you forget that, call the church office. We'll give you her contact information. Guys, we have a really special men's breakfast next Saturday morning. It'll be at 8.30. Uh, we'll have a wonderful meal cooked here. D. Cody has a crew of people who will do that. And after breakfast, we've got a really special program lined up. The bulletin says a special guest speaker, and we're going to tell you who that is. It's Steve Brandon. Steve is a member of this church and a phenomenal photographer. Uh, he loves to, to capture wildlife and nature, and he's going to have pictures of wildlife and nature from seven continents. Uh, we'll, we'll go from 8.30 to 10. Think about a man who's not in a church. Invite him to come with you, maybe a neighbor or somebody at work, and then make a reservation online so we know how many to cook for. Now, if you're sitting in the seat closest to the aisle on your row, there's a blue attendance pad right in the back of the seat in front of you if you would take that out and write in your name and contact information pass it along for those of you worshiping with us from home if you would open the Christ Church app and register thank you
Thank you, Sandy and Jonathan. Let's stand together as you now have a chance to sing your praise as we sing together the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Let's sing together. Lift your voices big and strong. Holy, Children's Moment. I'm Mary Beth Hammett, the Children's Ministry Director at Christ, and I am so glad that you have joined me today. So kids, gather around and let's just chat for a minute. Quick question for everybody. Do you like to get mail in the mailbox? I know things come by email and text and all that kind of thing, but I got a, a card in the mail just the other day, and it was just a card from a friend that was an encouragement card, and it, it just made my day. I don't know about you, but I still like to get mail in the mailbox sometimes. Um, all the other stuff, that's fine either way. But special cards coming in the mail, it's really cool. You know, my granddad was a mail carrier a long, long, long time ago. And he took his job very seriously because he was getting information into the hands of people. Well, you know, Jesus gave us a very important mission as well for us to share his good news with others. And it's not something that we just do if we feel like it or if we think about it, but it's important. And he wants us to be doing that all the time as people who love him and follow him. So this week, think about ways that you can share the good news with people. Maybe it's inviting them to church. Maybe it's telling them how important God is to you. Maybe it's sending them a card in the mail. There's lots of different ways that you can share the good news. Even, most importantly, is loving others. That's definitely the top one. So this week, look for ways to share Jesus with others. I'll see you next time.
seems to be no way. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. And all the people said, amen. Last week, we had the opportunity to have a community-wide event here where we were able to invite families in our area to uh, ice cream and movie night here in the Commons area, uh, actually in the youth center and Commons area. And it was wonderful to meet some new families and friends, and it gives us an opportunity to invite people into our church building so that they may feel more comfortable even coming into other opportunities that our church offers, like worship today. You make this possible by the generosity of your giving into the life of the church, and we give God thanks for your gifts. You may give in a variety of ways. You may give as you exit from the sanctuary. You may give online or through the church app, or you may give by dropping it off at the church office or mailing it in. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of today and life today, for the gift of your saving grace through Christ, your Son. And we do believe and trust in you to be our all in all. We look forward to this week as children return to school. We thank you for the week of preparation teachers, faculty, and staff have had this last week and as the children and youth and college students begin a brand new school year. We ask for your blessings upon each one, that they may learn even more about your wonderful, wonderful world. And be with us as a community as we surround them and continue to pray for them each day. We lift up to you those who need you in special and particular ways today, who are going through a season of sickness or surgeries, that you may be the great physician working alongside the medical team you have provided for them. We pray for those who are going through a season of grieving, that you may bring your comfort and peace into their lives. Give them strength for each new day. And for all of these, the caregivers who are surrounding them, be with them too. We thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you that you hear all of our prayers And we pray now together the prayer you continue to teach us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before I share the message today, I want to make you aware of an event coming up this Saturday morning at Centenary United Methodist Church downtown. It'll be from 10 until noon. The title is Creation Care, The Biblical Calling. Spiritual and Practical Ways to Love God's Creation. This will be in their Oak Street Center, which is the building out behind their main campus there. There's two young women from that church that will be the presenters, and I encourage those of you for whom that is a uh, subject of interest to attend and support them. 
You can do so either in person or by Zoom, and if you choose to do that online, simply contact our office. We'll get that link to you. Now, uh, full disclosure here, this is a United Women in Faith event, but I am sure, I am confident that if any men attend, they will not kick you out. It, it'll be okay. So guys, you can come here at 8.30 for breakfast and see and hear what Steve Brandon has to offer and then go down there and support them. And I'm confident, I believe, that what Steve's going to share is very much connected to what they're going to share. So I hope you can be a part of that. Little words that say a lot. A couple months ago, as I was praying and playing around with and trying to discern what God would have me share in sermons in August, I was intrigued by little words, tiny words in our language that pack a punch. They, they can say a lot. For instance, yes and no. Some of us need to step up more and say yes to those opportunities that God gives us in life. Uh, and then, of course, no is a, can be a very powerful word, especially when those temptations come our way in life, to be able to say no to those, to step away from those. Other words like do and now and for and can were on the list. However, the more I prayed and played around with that, the more it seemed the Holy Spirit guided me to just three little words to share with you today. And I was given a particular order in which to put the words before then, later, before we finish, we'll scramble them and put them in a different order and have a message. First word, be. Just B-E-B. -E in a world that focuses on valuing people mostly for what they can do. What can you do for me? In that kind of culture, in that kind of world, the God who gave all of us life invites us to first experience life just being. The first Bible verse that came to my mind when I thought about this is Psalm 46.10. And in fact, this is just a phrase uh, a, a short statement that's a part of that verse. God says through the psalmist, be still and know that I am God. You see, if our first point of emphasis in our life, our, our foundational understanding of ourself is what we can do, is that it's all about what I can do, it can sometimes put a lot of pressure on you. And I do believe God invites us to first just be. When we focus on just do, then, especially if we can do several things, we can get to thinking we're something of God. That we can be gods for ourselves. We can, we can be in charge. We can get things done. And that that's what life's all about. And when we do that, we make a huge mess of things. So again, God invites us to first just be, to enjoy life, to know that God loves you and me and everybody else. One of Jesus' lessons about life was that we were not to be anxious about it. One time he, he taught, he, he pointed to the birds of the air and the flowers in the field, and he said, notice how God cares for them. He invited us to rest and relax into God's care for us. Now, when I think about that, I think about children playing freely. And what I mean by that is playing in an unstructured environment. Many of you know me well enough to know that I love sports, and I encourage children and teenagers to play sports, to play in uh, where there's settings of rules and structure and teach all kinds of great lessons about life. But parents, please make sure those children also have time to just play freely. I love this picture. I remember times as a child playing in the yard at the house and out in, the, in, in that tree out in the front yard, playing in the woods behind Grandpa and Grandma's house, playing with other children in the neighborhood. I love this picture as well. Uh, it, it's a, it's, to me, it just pictures children enjoying each other 
and enjoying life. That's a big part of what it means to just be. And so often as we grow, as we get into our adult years, we lose that. God invites us to just be. Becky and David Hall got to go to the beach this past week and spend some time with their daughter and her family, and that meant time with those grandsons that they love so much. David sent us this picture of Becky and the boys out in the edge of the water. I love that picture. Um, many of you know that Becky has a lot of responsibility. She does a lot of things, both here at this church and on a larger church level. So I celebrate for her and with her at having this moment to just be, to enjoy that scene of the beauty and jaw-dropping vastness of God's creation at the ocean, to put her feet in the water. I was able to focus in on the water. I can assure you her feet are in the water. To spend time with those grandsons that she loves. Yes, part of learning what it means to just be is to spend time with other people, especially those closest to us. But we also need time alone. Here's another picture of, of, a great, uh, of someone enjoying the beauty of God's creation in a different setting. We need those times to be alone. Not just to be still and know that God is God, but to be still with God. God. Can I say that again? We need those times alone, not just to know that God is God, but to be still with God. To spend time in the silence. To talk with this Holy Spirit as we would with our best friend. To share our greatest joys and our greatest fears. But most of all, to just be with this creator who gave us life and who through Jesus has shown us a love beyond any other kind of love we'll ever know. For many of us, we simply need to detach from our TV and our tech devices more often. On a recent vacation trip that Vicki and I had, we got to spend a couple of days with some friends up in Virginia. They live out away from the bright lights of the city and, and so uh, I guess it was our first night with them. We were out on the back patio looking up at the stars in the sky. Now, we couldn't see that many stars. I think that's a special camera function there. But it was just so relaxing just to sit there watching the night sky. And I was reminded I need to do this more often. When I look up in the sky, especially at night, it reminds me of looking out over the ocean as well. And to, to think about the mind-boggling um, size of this universe. I can't even wrap my mind around it when they tell us about it. And yet the psalmist also said in thinking about that, that God has made us, that we're, you know, you, you get to thinking, I'm just kind of a speck in the midst of all that. But the psalmist said that God has made us a little lower than the angels. So before you feel the need to do anything, know that your beginning relationship with God is just to be, to be who you are, to be the person that God has created you to be. And then and only then comes that next word that the Spirit said for me to offer, go. To go, to, to go from where we are and who we are, and to explore out there beyond just who I am and where I am and what I know in my own experience, but to go beyond that because God's got so much to teach me out there beyond just where I'm at and who I am. In Matthew's gospel, after Jesus was resurrected, he met with his disciples one final time and he gave them their mission, and it starts with that word, go. Go make disciples. Don't wait for them to come to you. Go make disciples of all people. But before that, he had spent three years with them, teaching them what it meant to be disciples. They saw how his teaching was different from the other rabbis of that time and place. They experienced what it looked like to seek the least, the last, the lost, and the lonely. 
They watched him relate to his heavenly father in such a way and, and, and heard him assure them that they could also have that kind of relationship with God. I'm also reminded that the word go begins God's call to a man named Abram back in Genesis chapter 12 as God's ready to kind of reset things and start all over with the humans. And God wants to create a people through whom God can work to reach all people. And so he says to Abram, go, go from where you are. I'm going to show you where to go. And he changes his name to Abraham and he teaches them as he goes what it means to represent this God in this world. I believe God calls all of us to go, not only to new places and new experiences, but to new understandings and new thinking. In Matthew's gospel, several times in what we know as the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, you've heard it said, but I say to you. And each time it was an expansion of what their understanding was from the scriptures, from the teaching that they had heard. For example, the very first one, he says, basically, don't think that it's enough in God's eyes for you to be able to say, I've never killed anybody. Understand that you can use words and other actions that kill the spirit of somebody. So learn to control your anger because it can motivate you to do all kinds of things and say things to others that harm them. So the first word is be. Second word I was given is go. The third word is with. W I T H, with. The last words from Jesus in Matthew's gospel with some of the greatest words of assurance that he could give to any of us. I will be with you always. It's one of those themes that shows up again and again throughout the Bible. God never sends us to do anything. God never gives us a, an assignment of any kind without also promising that God will be with us. When God called Moses to go face Pharaoh in Egypt and demand that Pharaoh let his people go, Moses was also given examples of how God would go with him and give him the power that he would need to carry out his assignment. And after Moses died, God called on Joshua to lead the people on into the promised land, assuring him as well of God's presence and guidance. So we start out with this order of these words, be and go and with. In that order, they stand alone. They have their own meaning, specific meanings that we've looked at. Now we're going to change the order. Now the order is go, be, with. Here the words come together to remind us of our mission. Here again the words that Jesus said there at the end of Matthew's gospel. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Bishop Gregory Palmer was our guest preacher, our guest bishop and preacher at Holston Annual Conference back in June. He's been serving as a bishop since uh, 2000, for 23 years now, and since 2012 has been the bishop of the Ohio West Conference. He's a very good leader in the United Methodist Church and offered some very powerful sermons for us at Lake Junaluska back earlier in the summer. At one point in one of those sermons, he commented on this passage from Matthew's gospel in a way that caught my attention. In his study of the word go in that statement from Jesus, he had seen something that I hadn't noticed before. He said, you know, the Greek word that's used there is not so much an imperative go as in a uh, sending to a specific place or a specific thing to do. It's more like the better translation of it is as you go or in your going make disciples. In other words, in your everyday life, as you go about your everyday life, wherever you are, with whomever you are, make disciples. At your workplace, make disciples. 
in your neighborhood, make disciples. At your school, make disciples. With your family, your friends, your enemies, whoever, wherever, make disciples. Let it become a part of life, the core understanding of my purpose and my mission in life. Make disciples. Let me, let me try another way of describing some of this. I, I'm guessing that each of you have a person or a, a small group of people, maybe friends, family, a family, that you simply enjoy being with. Anytime you're around that person or that group of friends, you just have a good time. You enjoy their company. And maybe it, it's because they're just fun to be around. Maybe it's because they, you seem to learn something every time you're around them. Maybe it's because they challenge you in some way to be a better person than you are, have been. I believe Jesus invites his followers to go and be with people in such a way that people want to be around you because they learn from you. They see something in you that they want to be a part of. They see something in you that they want to be uh, involved in their life. So go be with people. But first, be with this Holy Spirit who is God. Spend time with this Spirit just being. Just relaxing into that relationship. Just soaking up the presence of God and learning who God created you to be. What God has created you to see and hear and experience every day of your life. Then you are spiritually filled in such a way that as you go out into the world being with people all the time, you begin to draw interest in, from, from them and in them to know more about this God we worship and serve. Be, go, with. Three little words that say a lot all by themselves. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, when you understand what they mean by themselves in that order, then you're much more prepared to go out and live through their meaning in a new order. Go, be, with. Amen? Let's pray. God, we give you thanks that you came to be with us, that you invite us to be with you, to simply be the person that you created us to be, to soak up your presence, to relish in having opportunities to, to share what's going on in our life with you. So help us first just to be and that we might then go be with others for you to help others come to know you and want to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen.
As always, we invite each of you to begin. If you've never begun a relationship with Christ, we invite you to do that, and we'd be thrilled to get to help you do that. And for all the rest of us, whether you started that relationship with Christ 50 years ago or more, or last week, continue to deepen that relationship. Look for those opportunities to be and to learn and to grow and what that relationship's all about. We believe that happens best in the life of the church. Know that you're welcome here at Christ Church. There's some contact information for Pastor David. He or any of us would love to journey along beside you as we continue to learn ourselves what it means to be his people. We're going to sing a couple of verses of an old hymn that says, Where he leads, I will follow. Let's stand and join in singing. So before you go out each day to be in the world, I invite you and encourage you to take time to be, to take time to experience that relationship with God. I know you can't be at the beach all the time to do that or in the mountains all the time to do that, whether that's on your back porch or in the easy chair in your den or out in the backyard or wherever that may be. I hope you have that place where you just spend time being, soaking up God's presence so that you're then filled and ready to go out into the world to be with others and to help others come to know him. God bless you as you go. Go be the people of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen.